Hey, this is the new Igloo Home Keybox 2. It's designed in Singapore. It works offline without Wi-Fi, and it just works off of Bluetooth. Um, it works with four AAA alkaline batteries and lasts up to 9 to 12 months. Let's open it up. So first off, we have the manual. Then we have a how-to kind of uh, placard for you can stick next to the uh, device for guests and other users. So what we have, here it is, a shiny new one. Comes with a nifty screwdriver. Open it up. Here are some of the contents. Pretty nice, comes with a second shackle. We'll talk about that later. And it has a main shackle. Here it is. So first off, you'll see here there's a cover. You can take it out, it's got four screws. Comes with the nifty screwdriver, like I said and you can take it off to put in your four AAA batteries. There we go, covers off. It's got a seal on it for waterproofing and we're gonna put in some batteries. Right away, you will be able to see that it lights up, pretty cool. Put the cover back on. It's beeping at me, but uh, it's okay. I want to be able to put all four screws on securely and tightly. Hear it buzzing and a lock. If you put your fingers over it, put one, two, th three, four. That is the default code. And it opens up like that. So, here, talking about the shaco, there is a release catch. When you pull on that, and it releases the standard shaco. Then you'll be able to put on your slim shackle. There you go. Let's pop it on. It's secure. What it does is allow you to be put it allow you to put it onto knobs like so. It really depends on the size of the knob you have. It's not necessary that you have to use this shackle. It's any one you want. You can also close it up and then lock it on after. So it's part of the uh, contents that you can put in. Obviously you can put in keys right here. You can put in various keys you'd like. But there's three hooks there and it's good enough to put in credit cards as well. So with the key box too, you get all these accessories in box. Like we said, the screwdriver comes with the screw anchors, the screw holder and the screws and some uh, rubber stoppers for the inside of the holes if you do not want to surface mount it. And extra screws such that if you lose the ones inside the screw cover for the batteries, it will replace them. Um, here you see some of the uses. And here you drill the hole, put in the anchors right here. Then you can slot in the screws underneath and put it inside. Let's open it up and see. Here we go. So you see the holes there. They can get covered up if you'd like extra protection on those holes as well as the screws that go straight through for mounting on surfaces if you're not going to hook it up. You can put two screws, four screws, as many as you like to secure it onto a surface mounted fence or wall or anything you desire. So let's get started with the pairing of the device. So here I already have the app. We can have it closed up or open. So what we want to do is go to configuration. We're going to manage locks. We're going to add locks. Here I already have a bunch of locks from previous editions. So we can choose our product here. Keybox 2. Let's tap on the keypad to activate the Bluetooth. Now it's on. It'll look it up. The one in white you hear it beep once, now it's registering the product onto your account in the server. Let's give it a name. Key box two. Once you confirm that, you can add it to existing home or new home. In this case, we'll just add it, call it a home. Let's look for the city I'm in. I'm in. Then we can add it and it will say that it's added 
and you can find the home you need and add it there. Once that's done, what you'll see is your list of homes and in San Diego here. This is the interface, the lock info page. You can press here, tap on that to enable. You can see it'll open it up by Bluetooth, which is really cool. You have to be within Bluetooth range to do so. Here you'll see the initial code that was generated. No longer will it be the one, two, three, four, but our new code that is, you can always change change this master code but you see now that's that's that we can change out the code let's say it has to be three four one two three one two three four one two three so once I do that I have to be within Bluetooth range to rewrite that master code to be a new one that I like the codes have to be seven and nine digits for master code and here we go so it's communicating boom now it's done, my new code should work. Magic. Other features in the app, you will see here on the log tab, the uh, access logs that have been saved in the device where I'm within range of it. I can update the logs and it'll take and show you what has occurred in terms of openings or any other uh, pin codes that are invalid that were used and it will keep them until the next time you sync. So let's do another thing is create a new pin. You can create pins for family, friends, visitors, tenants, whatever you like. These are just preset profiles. You can go to any one and change as you need. Let's have make one for a friend. It's default as a duration code but you can always make a one-time pin, permanent pin, duration pin or Bluetooth key. So let's make a one-time pin. Just give it a name, my friend. And what happens is once you have internet connection on your app, you do not have to be next to the device. It'll grab a new code that works for just your lock. And here we go. Let's try it once. Six, nine, four, seven, seven, eight, seven, five. Opens up. Perfect. Now let's close it. It will relock. Let's see if that really is a one-time pin. Six, nine, four, four, seven, seven, eight, seven, five. You heard that beep, 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 beep. When you enter a wrong code, it will, uh, or invalid code, it will beep and alarm, let you know that it does not work. Um, other codes that you can create here again, Let's create a permanent code that'll work all the time. My permanent code. So we can create it right away. There it is, my permanent code. So this one will work all the time until I remove it by Bluetooth. 8520. See that? It opens and closes. Let's go back to the log, update the device to the app, and you'll see my new codes are there. It shows I created it, I used it to open an invalid pin, which was a one-time pin I used once, and I tried it again, it's no longer valid, so it counts it as an invalid pin as well. So other cool features, if you go back to the info page go on the top you'll see the uh, battery status it'll give you a approximate time on how much more it'll uh, last you can reset the pins right here when you're next to the device let's say the permanent pin you no longer want to use you can always reset it by pressing that and clearing you can also uh, per periodically update the lock time just to make sure um, that it's synced properly and you'll get that. So here's another nifty little function. Let's say I want to change that permanent code that was created by the system. I can go in and now change the name of it. Let's call it new. And I can also change it to a shorter four to nine digit as I please. 
five, 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 let's say. So again, next to the log within Bluetooth range. If it takes long, tap and it'll work. That's my new code. Let's see if it'll work. Magic. So these are some of the cool features that we have, as well as a uh, duration code. Now duration codes are a little bit more complicated. You just have to give it a name as before. You have a start date and an end date, start date and end, uh, start time and end time. So you can always press now. It'll take the last hour of your local time. You can always change it for any time in the future as well, just as long as it's not in the past. Or you can make it start, let's say, later on. Uh, we're going to make it start and end for the next five days, starting next week. And there it is. You can plan new codes. Duration pin one. Um, the creation of the duration pin I just made, it won't be in active, but it will be in pending. Because here you'll see that it's going to start sometime in the future. And so it's pending until it's actually entered once on the start date within 24 hours of its start time. So we can also create uh, Bluetooth keys. They work similarly to duration codes. Uh, the way it set it up, my Bluetooth key one. You can also have it start it right now until let's say the end of the month and you can also be very precise with the time no longer is it an hour but you can also set it to the minute when you create that pin code it comes up with a QR code that you, someone can scan with their app and on their phone as well as you can send it and share it locally to other phone to phone messaging platforms email WhatsApp uh, SMS and whatnot so once you send that to a recipient, they'll grab the code that works for that lock and you'll get a notification that that pin has been retrieved on Bluetooth to allow the guest to use the pin via app, just like as if they were tapping here. They would be able to access those Bluetooth pins right here and visits. You can scan the QR code from there and if you have a valid guest Bluetooth key, it'll show up here. That's it for the access component. And on to other things, the cool features for the product. So if you notice here on the bottom, there are two prongs or contacts. What it does is allow it to be um, powered up by nine volts if you do not have batteries or low batteries in it. So if you tap like so, it'll bring up the device. You have to keep it there and punch in the validated codes that are already in the lock memory and allow you to get in that way. Here we go. So here we're gonna talk about some of the advanced features or lesser known uh, features of the app and the lock box or key box too. If you have a list of multiple locks, like I do in multiple homes, and you want some of them to be highlighted, maybe use them more frequently, you can actually swipe right, and there's a little heart icon there, and you press there, and it'll load it up on top. If you swipe back here, it'll put it back in its home. It never leaves the home, but it's just a shortcut to put it on a easier to reach position on top. Secondly, uh, if you swipe down, you see there's a swirling icon. That's always to get the latest status on most interfaces, uh, whether it be the actual pin codes here, you can swipe, you see, or the uh, access logs, if you need to get new access logs, um, as well as uh, any other information you want to receive. So in the key box, you can also, if you don't want to go to the info page to press this Bluetooth unlock, you can also just press it right then and there and it'll connect to device and open it up by Bluetooth. There you go. Another thing is we see is in the account settings, you'll be able to enable fingerprint login from your phone uh, fingerprint module if you like. If you want vibration feedback, you can always toggle those on and off.
You can change the language. At this time, we have、uh, nine languages available English, Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Spanish, French, Indonesian, Vietnamese, and Russian. More on the way. So, here also you'll have、uh, for the、uh, Bluetooth keys to be claimed when they're received by a recipient, you'll get a notification. And every time that Bluetooth key is used, you can get, set a notification. If you want to turn it off, you turn it off there. If you want to connect your Airbnb account to enable remote hosting, you just press here and it'll log in and connect to the host account. Coast hosting is not allowed. But、uh, main account as well. Here we also have a way to delete. If we want to remove this lockbox from this app account and start brand new, all we have to do is find my key box here, press delete lock here, or you can go here to change the name of the key box if you like. So I'm going to call it KB2 instead of key box2. You can press submit. And I'll change the name of that lockbox there. And let's delete this from the account. And all you do is tap on it, make sure the Bluetooth and the keypad is on. Press delete there. It'll ask if you really want to delete. And then return it to factory settings, like one, two, three, four. What it'll do is take that information, give the command to the key box. Then it'll come back to this page, the manage locks page, when it's done. You'll notice to double check it one, two, three, four. No longer master codes work and it's off of the account now. Some other troubleshooting things that we want to highlight. In the key box here, you will notice when we take off the battery cover, we can also do a hardware reset. Inside the cover, there is a button. Now you'll need a toothpick or a hard, like a paper clip ready. If you Just straighten it out, just make it long enough. You'll notice there is a button right in the middle. If you are unable to unpair your lock, what we can do is reset the device from within. You press it here, it'll beep, hold it. About two seconds, you hear the beep beep. What it's doing is resetting the device to default if you are unable to delete it from the app. But when you do do that and you're unable to delete it from the app for whatever reason, you do have to let us know、uh, by contacting us at support at eaglehome.co,、uh, whichever account that was and what lockbox name or Bluetooth ID it is in order to remove it from the server so that it can be paired onto another account on or another phone. Okay. If you have any other questions, please feel free to contact us at www.eaglehome.co. Backslash support or email us at support at igluhome.co as well. Thank you very much. Enjoy.